Hello listeners, this video discusses the play Hayavadana written by Girish Karnad. This is a 1971 Kannada play. This play contains two acts. The plot of the play is based on Katha Sarit Sagara and this play is a retelling of Thomas Mann's The Transpossessed Heads. The Transpossessed Heads is a novella which was written in the year 1940 and it was published later. The Transpossessed Heads is a German play written by Thomas Mann and it is translated by H. T. Loaf Porter and published in the year 1941 by Alfred A. Knopf. The plot of The Transpossessed Head and Hayavadana are similar but the character names are different. The twin play of Hayavartana is Nagamandla, published in the year 1988. It was also a Kannada play. This play Hayavartana presents the story of two friends, that is Dev Datta and Kapila. And the two friends' love interest is Padmini. Let us first check on to the characters of this play before we deal the summary of the play. The first is the Bhagavata. In Hinduism, a Bhagavata is a worshipper or devotee. In this play, the narrator is the Bhagavata. He presents the narration and the story of Devadatta, Kapila and Padmini. Next is Devadatta is one of the two heroes of the play. And his name means God-given. The Bhagavata, the narrator, describes Devadatta as fair in colour. This Devadatta is the son of a Brahmin. He is a religious teacher and he is killed as a poet and a pundit. So Devadatta is referred as a man of knowledge in the play. The next character is Kapila. He is one of the two heroes of the play. His name means reddish brown. Because his skin is dark and he is the son of an iron smith. So Kapila, he is referred as a man with great physical strength. Kapila is a devoted friend to Devadatta. Padmini is the heroine of this play. Padmini ignites a rivalry between the two friends Devadatta and Kapila. She marries Devadatta because she loves his mind. But quickly she realizes that she has some sensitive feeling towards Kapila. Eventually after the marriage when she gets pregnant with Devadatta's child, she begins to attain attraction for Kapila's muscular body. And followed by this Devadatta kills himself and quickly followed by that Kapila too kills himself. Eventually, Padmini switches the men's heads accidentally. Hayavadana, the play's title. And Hayavadana literally means horse face. Hayavadana is interrupted in the main action of the play to explain his origin story to the Bhagavata. As I earlier mentioned, Bhagavata is a worshipper or devotee. Hayavadana is a product of a marriage between a princess and a celestial being in horse form. So Hayavadana, when he travels to goddess Kali, he asks Kali to become a complete man. Kali turns him into a complete horse and he is happy to be a complete being but he only laments that he retains his human voice. The next is the boy. The boy is the son of Padmini who appears on stage as a young boy at the very end of the play. This boy is born to Padmini and Devadatta. When Devadatta kills himself and as Kapila kills himself, eventually when Padmini accidentally shifts their heads, the boy technically has two fathers, one of whom has the body of his father Devadatta and one of whom has the head of Devadatta. The final character is Kali. Kali is a Hindu goddess of death. Kali appears in this play frequently when various characters go to her temple. 
Devadatta sacrifices his head to her and Kali interrupts Padmini as she tries to kill herself as well. Then Kali revives Devadatta and Kapila but only after Padmini has accidentally swapped their heads. When Hayavadana travels to her temple to ask her to make him a complete man, she instead makes him a complete horse. Then there is a referred character in this play that is Vidya Sagar who is the father of Devadatta. He never appears in this play but he is only referred. The play has two acts. Let us learn the summary of the play. The play opens with a puja to Ganesha. Ganesha is a lord. The play opens with Bhagavata asking Ganesha for the blessings of the performance that he and the company are about to put on. Then Bhagavata places the audience in the setting of the play. He places Dharmapura. He then introduces the audience to the king Dharmashil. He then asks questions on the incompleteness of man and God and also on the perfection of man. He then introduces the two characters. They are the two thick friends. They are Devadutta and Kapila. Devadutta, he is a sharp-minded and a highly intellectual person. Devadutta has defeated poets and pundits with his knowledge and he is a son of a Brahmin. The second one is Kapila. He is a muscular man with physical strength. He is the son of a Lohar. Lohar means a person who does blacksmith. Both Kapila and Devadatta become friends because both are in contrast. That is, one person lacks power and strength and another person lacks knowledge and intellect. And according to the playwright, the head of Devadatta, that is a person who has knowledge, and the body of Kapila, who has physical strength, accomplish a complete man. So then the narrator compares their pair to the pair of Ram and Lakshman, Love and Kush, Krishna and Balram. All these are the pairs of great brothers in the Hindu mythology. Then a character in the play appears on stage, shouting and running towards Bhagavata. He tells Bhagavata that he saw a strange creature that looks like a horse by face but speaks like a man. He also says that the creature has the head of a horse and the rest of the body was like a man. Bhagavata, without listening to the character's speech, he asks the character to prepare for the play. Then the character runs away from the stage and soon after he runs shouting again. Now there is a strange creature who appears on stage. So as it is earlier described by the character, the creature with a head like a horse and the body like a man appears onto the stage. Looking at this character, Bhagavata thinks that this man is someone who is wearing a mask of a horse. Bhagavata then tries to remove the mask of the man but realizes that it is truly half a man and half a horse. Now the creature starts to introduce itself before Bhagavata and with a man who appeared to announce about this creature that man is present on stage and the creature is also introducing himself to the audience. Now the creature introduces himself as Hayavatana he starts to narrate the story to the audience. He tells that once upon a time there was a princess who had to choose a groom for her marriage. He says that there were many princes who approached her from far and wide places, but the princess fell in love with the horse of an Arabian prince. Now she became desperate to marry that horse. And eventually her parents allowed her to do so. She was married to the horse. And after 15 years of the marriage, the horse transformed into a celestial being. Then the princess rejected him as her husband. 
then the celestial being caused her to be a mare mare meaning a female horse and she becomes a female horse eventually the princess also gives birth to hayavardhana so that is a creature in front of the audience hayavardhana having a horse face and a body like a human now wants to get rid of this cursed life now bhagavata he asks hayavardhana to go to goddess kali i mean he instructs him to go to goddess kali temple in chitrakoot he also asks the character to accompany him on the way then they leave the stage now bhagavata moves ahead to narrate the story of the play devadatta and kapila appear on stage devadatta tells kapila that he wants to marry a woman who is beautiful that is padmini with an utmost desire to marry this beautiful woman padmini he pledges to sacrifice his arms to goddess kali and his head to rudra now kapila in order to help his friend he goes to padmini and presents the proposal of devadatta to padmini in order to marry devadatta both devadatta and padmini marry and by the time devadatta realizes that padmini is also attracted towards kapila and kapila is also vice versa attracted to padmini after the marriage padmini gets pregnant devadatta knowingly tries to put off the program of visiting ujjain ujjain is a city in the state of madhya pradesh and there is a temple located in ujjain on the journey padmini repeatedly praises kapila's physical strength before devadatta devadatta feels jealous but he does not blame padmini and after visiting ujjain kapila and padmini they go to rudra temple but devadatta refuses to accompany them in his mind devadatta realizes that kapila has a good physical strength and beauty that he can attract any women now devadatta goes to goddess kali temple where he reminds himself of his pledge to sacrifice his head to the goddess kali then he wishes and prays for the well-being of kapila and padmini he then beheads himself with the sword and dies there meantime both kapila and padmini come out of the temple they worry on not finding devadatta there kapila leaves padmini there and searches for his friend devadatta finally he reaches in the same temple that is a temple of kali when he sees the dead body of his friend he is shocked he now realizes that he is responsible for the death of his friend kapila then takes the same sword and beheads himself and soon padmini reaches there and she has no clue about the death of her husband and his friend now she considered herself responsible for the duel between the two friends and their deaths she provokes the goddess kali and also tries to kill herself then goddess kali appears in front of her and stops her goddess asks her to place the heads with their respective body so that goddess will rejoin them with her magical powers and bring them back to life patmini listening to the command of goddess kali in a hurry in a hurry she shifts the heads of kapila and devadatta she realizes that kali has disappeared and at once when she became thankful to goddess kali immediately realizes her mistake of shifting their heads now devadatta's head is joined with kapila's body similarly kapila's head is joined with devadatta's body soon both the friends regain to their senses and they are confused about their bodies but both make a claim for padmini the man with devadatta's head makes a plea that head is the master of the body so he has the right over padmini 
Similarly, the man with Kapila's head makes a plea that Patmini has remained with Devadatta's body and so he has the right over Patmini. Meanwhile, the narrator Bhagavata arrives onto the stage. Then all the characters become statues for a moment and the narrator addresses the audience. He asks the audience to think for a solution to this problem. So here ends Act 1. Act 2 begins as the narrator repeats the same question to the audience. He asks for a solution to this problem. He also talks about the story of Vikramaditya and Vital. Vital is otherwise called as Vitala. It is a Hindu mythological story. So the Vitala is compared to the vampires of Western mythology. So the narrator reminds the audience about King Vikrama who replies to Vital that the mind, that is head, is the master of the body. King Vikrama has also said that head gives recognition to an individual. Now Bhagavata tells that all three has to go to a whole hermit in order to seek a solution for their problem. The audience can now only hear the words of hermit on the stage that Devadatta's head is the Swami that is husband of Bhatmini. Hearing this Devadatta and Bhatmini accept this in delight and Kapila being disappointed leaves for the forest. The time now passes and Devadatta brings some dolls. These dolls also play the role of a narrator. Eventually, as days pass by, Devadatta starts losing his physical strength and as a result, they are losing their mutual interest. Now, a child is born to Devadatta and Padmini. Devadatta goes to buy new dolls from the fair in Ujjain. The narrator Bhagavata appears on the stage and tells Kapila has regained his physical strength. Now Patmini meets Kapila in the forest and also tells him that it is Kapila's son as it is born from Kapila's body. But Kapila does not accept it. Meanwhile Devadatta, he comes in search of his wife to the forest. He finds both together, that is Padmini and Kapila. Growing in jealous, Devadutta takes out a sword and challenges Kapila for a duel. Both are killed in the duel. Now, Padmini finds herself lonely in the forest. Bhagavata arrives there and Padmini hands him the child and some dolls to him. Patmini now claims Bhagavata to hand over the child to Devadatta's Brahmin father, that is Vidya Sagar, after five years. She then leaves the stage by declaring that she is going to perform Sapi. Immediately, Bhagavata decides to end the play with his speech. Now the stage gets noisy. Actor 1 arrives and claims that he has heard Hayavada chanting national anthem and patriotic song. Then actor 2 appears with Devadatta's son who is of now 5 years of age. The boy has now 2 dolls. Hayavadana comes there. Bhagavata and actor 2 are talking lightly and creating fun. Now all 3 characters on stage are laughing. Then the boy too starts laughing and the dolls slip out of his hand. Bhagavata says that the boy hasn't expressed any emotion of happiness, anger or sorrow in the past five years and today the boy is smiling just because of Hayavadana. Now Hayavadana he comes back and tells his own story. He says that he was trying to behead himself in the temple, in the temple of Goddess Kali and Goddess Kali appeared in front of him. Hayavadana now tells his desire. Goddess Kali, without listening to him fully, gives blessing to him. He then becomes a complete horse instead of becoming a complete man, yet he is satisfied. Hayavadana wants to lose the human voice that he has. He then sings national anthem. 
as he believes that people who sing national anthem would also lose their voice meanwhile he starts to cry then the boy starts singing a tragic song which was chanted by his mother batmini however the now tries to laugh and his voice completely changes into a horse now hayavadana is transformed into a complete horse bhagwata asks the actor to go to brahmin vidya sagar and inform him that his grandson is coming to him riding on a great horse bhagwata now thanks lord ganesha for the successful performance of the play this is how the play ends in the play we see girish karna wrote this play with western theoretical convention he places the audience directly within the indian culture and also promotes religion let us see the themes of this play identity hybrid and incompleteness because the th- play itself has three layers first a ritual prayer second is the plot that concerns hayavadana and the third is the actual story of the play so the action story presents two men who are friends whose heads are accidentally swapped there is a great confusion for both kapila and devadatta to know about their identity to know about their integration of their body in the opening of the play itself the play begins with a puja which is a ritual for lord ganesha who is a main deity in hinduism so ganesha itself is a god with the body of a boy and the head of an elephant the next theme is the mind versus the body the most central character of hayavadana is the love triangle between padmini devadatta and kapila devadatta and kapila are best friends they both fall in love with padmini Patmini in turn is attracted to the attributions in each of them so the story displays the conflict between the mind and the body or between logic and lust next theme is the storytelling throughout the play there is a play within a play it is got several layers first the play opens with a ritual to ganesha as the bhagavata who is the narrator ask ganesha to bless the play that the company is about to perform then it is the story of hayavadana hayavadana is introduced to the audience he explains about his origin as a half horse half man and then the play is headed towards the real play that is the love triangle of devadatta kapila and padmini so here the play that is the story lines of the play is interrupted and weaved in one another the play then pictures indian culture and nationalism because hayavadana is the best example of the theater of roots movement in india so this movement began after india gained independence from britain in 1947 and the play writes they began to explore western dramatic conventions in favor of using regional languages and theoretical forms in their plays hayavadana itself is written in regional language that is girish karnat's language kannada kannada is an indian language and it has got the elements of indian yakshagana and natak theater yakshagana is a dance drama of south india which is associated most strongly with the state of karnataka so yakshagana it has got elaborate colorful costumes makeup and masks which consist some of most striking features of the art form as we know yakshagana that is the traditional theater is associated with girish karnat three of girish karnat's play that is hayavadana nagamandala and thuklak it has got the expressions of yakshagana and karnat also uses various theoretical forms within his play in order to argue the idea of indian culture and the unified nation with many diverse traditions the symbols used in this play are masks and the fortune lady's flower each character in the play has got a mask 
the mask in the play represents the incompatibility between the character's head and body in the beginning of the play in the puja to ganesha a mask is brought out that represents the god who has got the head of an elephant and the body of a boy and all the characters like devadatta kapila and hayavadana also have masks because their heads are different bodies the next symbolism is patmini's happiness in her marriage hope this video helps if you have query please write it down and if you have suggestion for videos please write it down below thank you for listening